this better? Whoa. Okay. Right. <laughs> so, um, out. Net SNMP is, um, as probably everybody of you knows, is the dominant toolkit to implement SNMP on, on, on Unix. Um, and it's basically it's, it's applications, SNMP work, command line applications mostly, and um, libraries. Um, it's got a master agent, SNMPD. It's extensible. You can uh, write modules in C, which are uh, um, included via the DLO, DL open system call. And it's got uh, some other extension mechanisms as well, SMARX Agent X in particular. Um, it's basically it's a C AP. Um, it's got its template generator MIP to C, so you can, um, if, if you're focused on C, you can just um, give it a MIP and it will, you will just call MIP to C on it and it will generate a, um, um, a, a, a template for your own agents, so you don't have to, to, to write everything yourself, you just fill in the missing pieces, etc. But it's C, obviously. And, um, well, the agent architecture it uses internally is beyond this talk. So why Python? Um, my ex boss told me so. It's a plain and simple answer. Um, could have been Ruby as well, but so it came Python. Um, NetSNMP comes with a Python module. NetSNMP, though. Um, it's a quite large pile of, of, of C code um, that abstracts the whole C API into, into an object oriented approach, but it's uh, client code only. So if you want to do an agent, you're stuck. Um, so basically, the idea is um, we just take the C API and we access it from Python with C types, um, imitating agentx subagents written in C. Um, I'm not the first one to have had that idea. There's a module on SourceForge called Python Agent X, um, but it had some design issues and it looked rather orphaned to me. Um, I did some patches initially. But uh, after seeing them not being considered for, for, for weeks and months, uh, I just thought, well, uh, dump the whole shit and rewrite it myself, so I understand it. Which is, of course, an attitude which is uh, well known among uh, developers. Just do it yourself. Hello, Python that is an P agent. Um, it's pretty simple, actually. It's just two source files. Um, one um, has all the C type stuff, which means. Um, Prototypes, as we would say in C, um, which webs the API called, just 13 kilobytes. And then um, on top of it, this netsnp agent.pi, which is um, the file with the classes. We'll see about that. Um, and it's also not, not, not quite large. But it's extensively commented, which explains why the real code size is one third less. Um, I've got example MIBs and agents included. What I mean coding style, um, it's not particularly PEAP8 or whatever the Python coding style um, proposal is. It's more or less my own coding style, but it's consistent. And it's been tested with um, both 5.4 and 5.7 versions of NetSNMP for the simple reason that um, it was targeted at enterprise Linux distributions, as they call themselves, SUSE and um, Ubuntu. And they're still shipping 5.4, so I have to take care of those as well. Let's look um, how we would implement an MIB. Um, this is basically the um, ASN notation, how, how you um, construct MIBs. You just give it a name. Um, you just tell it a data type. In this case, it's an unsigned 32-bit um, Scala value. Um, Max access, etc., is not so important right now. You give it a description, and um, you give it a reference where in the SNMP MIB tree you want um, this object to appear. So this simple scalars one translates to something like dot one, dot three, dot six, etc. This is a quite simple example. It's just an integer value which we want to to, to make available. Um, you could have, um, you can also do tables, but that's way more complex. But it's supported, of course. So if you have an MIB like this, this is merely a declaration. You're just saying, um, you're just merely constructing a tree of information. Um, you don't have the code yet. And that's, of course, the intent of using my Python SNP agent module. 
So you write some Python code, you put an import statement in it, and you just import the one file with the classes, not the API calls. Um, and you construct a new object of type NetSNP agent, which uh, needs an agent name, which NetSNP um, requires internally. Um, and you give it a list of uh, MIP files. In this case, the MIP file we just um, defined. Um, NetSMP requires that, um, for example, so it can translate internally between um, symbolic names and the numeric OIDs we've just seen. And so you create an agent object. Of course, you do proper exact exception handling, unlike here. Next thing you do, um, just because you've um, declared a, a structure in the MIB file, um, doesn't mean that all those um, information elements uh, have been appearing magically. You still have to explicitly register them, which makes sense because you could have two agents implementing different parts of one MAB file. So you come up with a registration. Um, I've got sort of a class factory um, here for the different data types. In this case, integer 32. I thought it was unsigned, right? There you go. <laughs> Whatever. Um, and you give it the, the OID where this integer um, should be registered below, so inside your MIB tree. Once you've done that, you've registered all your um, SNP objects. I'm speaking of SNP objects because you could just as well register a table. A table is basically rows and cells of simple scalar values. Um, once you've done that, you call agent start. <laughs> Um, that makes it actually connect to the master agent, SNPD. Of course, you do proper accept your handling again. And then um, your agent basically looks like this. Um, this is a simple example, of course. Uh, you've got an end endless loop. Um, you call agent check and process all the time. This is, in fact, a net SNP library call. Um, they designed it this way. And as I said, I'm just wrapping their API calls. Um, so we have to do it this way as well. This example, I could, um, for fun, um, update the integer value I just declared and, and, and double its value all the time, provided I would have initialized it, or give it a, its value or whatever. And um, I could call an SNP set from the command line um, and see the new value appear here. Um, this is very simple. There are, of course, more complete examples, um, for example, of tables in the source distribution. And a real-life agent is, of course, also much more complex. So the agent I wrote for internal use is like 120 kilobytes, 3,000 lines, um, because you want to do all the fancy stuff like uh, demonizing and, and, and log for logging and whatever. Right. Um, if I have time, I'll do a short demo in a, in a second. Just so you know, there's some things missing, of course. Notifications and traps, in particular. So um, you can't... As of now, you can write an agent which informs the master agent, um, for example, of a fan failure or anything like that. API documentation, who would have thought that? And um, maybe some unit tests, because as I said, after all, we produce safety, right? So it would be, of course, nice to have um, the elementary software modules um, have safety as well. I'm going to give a real short, quick demo. This is the examples directory of the uh, SOS distribution. And we've got the simple agent here. If you look inside, this is all the things um, we just saw, basically. Scalar values, different um, data types, and also tables. And um, the nice thing is you just run the script. It sets up everything necessary to test the whole thing, like um, calling SNMPD. Um, is isolated from the rest of the system. So you can actually run it with a system-wide SNP instance running. It even says uh, at the top what the commands you have to run. And it dumps the current values of all those um, variables. And so I can go ahead from separate shell, just give it the command like, like uh, take this MIP I have in this directory, connect to the instance on this port, because as I said, it's separate from system-wide SNPD. And it gives me the values. And I can do things like, um, um, like I, I can also access the um, the tables. If I had the right um, OID, that's first table. All right. 
So in this example, it's some well, should be temperatures or anything like that. Um, and I could play around with SNMP set as well. But because my time is up, um, questions. Um, how much overhead is there compared to implementing Asian in C? Sorry? How much more overhead is there in Python less SNMP agent than there would be implementing agents in C? In terms of what? In terms yeah, of repeat the question. Yeah. The question was um, <clears throat> how much overhead um, a Python implementation would be compared to C. Uh, in, in what terms? You mean in like like uh, one speed or? Uh, well, we currently use Nessus and PC agents as a base to our product, and I'm thinking of re-implementing it in Python to simplify some of the agents. And we can be doing up to hundreds, two hundred requests per second. Yeah. I mean, is, is there a lot of wrapper around the C API, or is it? Just fairly box standard. It's basically it's a, it's a, it's a wrapper. It's it's very close to the C API. So if you if you have ever delved into the um, the details of the C API, you will recognize uh, much of it. Um, then again, as, as as you saw, it's it's pretty abstract. You just give an agent, create an agent object and register some variables, and and, and you're done. Um, as as for the overhead, I haven't benchmarked it um, for the simple reason that. Um, Writing the same in C, the same agent I had to write, um, was no option. So I, I have no comparison. But um, overall, um, I haven't seen any performance issues so far. Because Python is actually quite fast. Um, uh, we're running out of time because the next talk has to start. Yeah. So uh, yeah. thank you, Peter. Come to me afterwards. And any questions? Any questions, um, chase him out um, outside the room. Um, the next door will start just in a couple minutes.